what I suggest kind of in passing on that last problem is check these on the calculator. So I'm showing you exactly what I'm punching in here. You can see the solutions we got for that last problem were 120 and 240. You can check those. Cosine of 120, the cosine of 240 are both negative 0.5, which means we have solved the equations. Right? We've satisfied cosine of x equals negative 1 half which is negative 0.5. So, you know, don't be bashful about using your calculator to check your answers. All right, let's try one more of these basic ones and then we'll move on to some serious techniques that we'll use to solve these, but I can't emphasize how important it is that we can do the basic ones because this is how all, every single one of your problems are gonna end. All right, so, number three. Let's say tan of x is equal to Let's go negative 1. All right. First things first, we're going to solve for principal values. You need the principal values regardless. So this isn't something that we're going out of our way to find. Even if they say solve between 0 and 360 or 0 and 2 pi, you still need that principal value as your starting point. So tangent of x equals negative 1. If we're talking principal values, we are saying what is tan inverse of negative 1. What is the functional inverse of tangent at negative 1? Well, you go to your calculator or you have this memorized, which I suggest you do, you get a quadrant 4 answer, which should not surprise you, because tangent inverse, if it's positive, which it's not, but if it's positive, you go to quadrant 1. If it's negative, you go to quadrant 4. You just give a negative answer. So, get rid of that one. Tangent inverse of positive 1 is positive 45. Tangent inverse of negative 1 is negative 45. Sine inverse works the same way. It's cosine inverse that throws it into quadrant 2 when it's negative, as we saw in the last problem. All right, so if they say, what's the principal value here? You would say it's negative 45. Or if you ask me for radians, I would say negative pi force, of course. So negative 45 or negative pi force if they ask for radians. So let's try 0, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 360. And once we get these degree answers, again, we'll be easily able to convert them to radians. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. All right, now I said not always does the principal value give you one of your solutions. Because if you look at negative 45 degrees, unfortunately that is not between 0 and 360. It's less than 0. You say, well, that was a huge waste of time. No. We just have to give the alternate version. So a negative 45 throws us into quadrant 4. No kidding. Negative 45, we just have to go with the positive way around. In other words, we're going to go counterclockwise, and we'll get, better there, we'll get 300 and 15 degrees. So that wasn't totally worthless. It just wasn't exactly an answer that works between 0 and 360, but it works as a very strong clue for the actual angle that I need, which is 315 degrees. So 315 degrees is one solution of this equation, and that puts us in quadrant 4, as you can see, and it makes sense. Tangent is negative in quadrant 4, Next question, where else is tangent negative besides quadrant 4? First thought might be 3. Nope, tangent's actually positive in 3. We have to go to quadrant 2. So drawing a quadrant 2 angle, where can I put you? Quadrant 2. Ah, put you over here. If I draw a quadrant 2 angle, with a reference of, not negative 45, but a reference of 45 degrees, we can get our other angle. So here's quadrant two. The other angle will be 135. And again, until you get very familiar with this, I would suggest just punch it in the calculator. I mean, it takes but seconds. So, if I did the tangent of 315 and the tangent of 135, notice tangent of 315, 
negative 1, tangent of 135, negative 1. Those are the two solutions that solve this. And those are the only two between 0 and 360. I mean, we can keep going with, you know, coterminal angles, if you remember that. Add 360 to 315, and, you know, 360, what is that, 675. If I did the tangent of 675, if I did the math right, but 675 is out of bounds. We said 0 to 360 right here. So these are the only two solutions between 0 and 360 that work for this tangent of x equals negative 1. And then to finish this off, I said, OK, now this time we're going to go with radians. OK, we go with radians, 315 degrees. Well, we're talking pi force. Oh, goodness, what are you? You are 7 pi force, I believe. A little rusty on that, but take 315, multiply by pi over 180. You do get 7 pi force because 8 pi force is 2 pi. That's right. And 135, familiar with that one. That would be 3 pi force. So those would be our radian solutions. Right? Again, I consider this the toughest part of solving trigonometric equations is handling it from these basic basic equations. Right? All right, I do want to do one where we do come out with a quadrantal, so already a spoiler alert. Let's say we had number four sine of x equals, let's say, negative one. Right? Now, again, your calculator will figure this one out and we say we're either going to quadrant one or quadrant four, quadrant four if it's negative, but that's kind of a misnomer there because when you're dealing with a quadrantal angle, you're not in any particular quadrant. We are working with a quadrantal angle where sine of x is equal to negative one. If you go with your principal value here, principal value sine of x equals negative one, we're looking at what sine inverse of negative one is. Now, on your calculator, if you're in degree mode, sine inverse of negative 1 is going to be negative 90 degrees. That's our principal value. Or if we're talking radians, we would simply say pi halves. Now, as far as 0 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 360, we've got to figure out, does this quadrantal work? And the answer is, well... Um, no, because negative 90 is less than 0, so we can't use negative 90, but we can use that as a clue. If I draw a negative 90 degree angle, that's what it would look like. Negative 90 degrees, well, we understand all we got to do is go the positive direction, counterclockwise. We can say, well, negative 90 is, in essence, the same. It's not the same angle, but it is going to solve this as 270 degrees. Right. So 270 degrees is definitely a solution here. Question is, are there others? There are other places where sine is equal to negative 1. And as it turns out, there are not, from 0 to 360. And we can go back to our graph for sine, because when we graph sine, we, we normally write 2 pi, let me just do that again. That's 360 right there, that's 180. Right. So where is sine negative 1 at? Well, if you draw the graph for sine, you'll find out that it's negative 1 at one location, one location only, from 0 to 360 that is. Nice job there, you get the idea. Right there at, well, we call that 3 pi halves, otherwise known as 270. So there is but one solution. Now, just because it's quadrantal, don't always assume there's just going to be one solution. You can get two solutions. It is possible. But let's finish this off. So if they asked for radians, they said, okay, 0 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2 pi, you would call this 3 pi halves. Right. What I'm saying is, if they say sine of x equals 0, let's just really quickly do that one. Sine of x equals 0. If you do inverse sine for your principal value on the calculator, 
inverse sine of zero, you will get zero. Zero degrees or, let's see if I do the conversion right, should be zero radians. Now, if we go zero to 360, Well, take a look at your graph of sine. Where is sine zero from zero to 360? Now, here's where it's very important. The inequality does say equal. So zero, in this case, our principal value, is one of the solutions. Right? Well, where else is sine zero besides zero? The answer is pi, or 180. That's between zero and 360. And also at 2 pi, which, since they have the inequality as equal, that would have to be another solution. So we can't put quadrantals in a box and say, well, you're only going to get one answer from 0 to 2 pi or 0 to 360, whichever. That's not true. You could get three solutions. You just have to kind of look at the graph. Those quadrantals can be tricky, but we can easily graph a sine or a cosine or even a tangent if we need to. And we can figure these out, these quadrantals. So let's quickly put this between 0 and 2 pi. And say, OK, 0 degrees is obviously 0 radians. 180 is pi radians. 360 is 2 pi radians. Now, don't think you're going to have to go through this process, all of these things on you know, your solving equations. They're going to pick one of them. They'll maybe say, just solve for principal values. Well, after you do the inverse, you're done. They may say solve between 0 and 360. Well, fine, give it in degrees. Or if they say solve in radians, give it in radians. They're not going to expect you to do degrees and radians for every single problem as well as principal values. Right, that's my cue. Next video.